Well, as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of military aviation, we take a look at the Coast Guard's unique place in the history of flight. And Coast Guard Petty Officer Adam Eggers speaks with the service's longest tenured aviator. The U.S. Coast Guard's involvement in aviation can actually be traced back to 1903, when the Wright brothers made their famous December flight, with the help from the crew of the nearby life-saving station. To find out more about the Coast Guard's aviation history, we spoke with someone who was a part of that history. When I came in the Coast Guard, um, it was in the olden days, in the 1970s, and I was one of the first classes that had women in it, in OCS and we hadn't quite figured out what we were going to let women do. So I applied for flight school and I was told, well, we don't send women to flight school. So that then became a challenge and uh, with great support, from eventually we got that door broken down. Vice Admiral Cray also happens to be the highest ranking female in the history of the armed services as she serves as second in command of the Coast Guard. But one of her most special designations is that of the service's ancient albatross. Uh, what it means is I am the person in the Coast Guard who got their wings longest to go. So to go full circle from being told I couldn't do it to being the ancient albatross is kind of fun. Throughout the years, Coast Guard aviators have distinguished themselves as skilled pilots, dodging enemy fire in both world wars and Vietnam to dangerous rescues at sea in some of the worst conditions imaginable. Well, it's the same, same way as our small boat community and our ships. Uh, we do hazardous work in a dangerous environment. When you can save a life, it is the most thrilling feeling in the whole world and it carries you over for the rest of your life. When you lose one, uh, it's just a feeling of great despair. She is also a part of Coast Guard aviation lore. And, although it may sound like a joke, it's actually a true story. Uh, when I was in Barber's Point, we we were doing a trial project uh, in which we had three pigeons in a round bubble mounted on the bottom of the helicopter. And you had a pigeon in each half and then a pigeon in the back. These pigeons had been trained over at, uh, at the marine uh, lab to uh, peck when they saw something orange. Theoretically, an orange life jacket they or something, they would peck and that would give you the sensor that, oh, the left pigeon saw it or the right pigeon saw it or the pigeon you know, looking behind saw it. One innovation that is no joke came in 1983 with the creation of the Coast Guard Rescue Swimmer Program. Up until that time, survivors had to get themselves into the rescue basket. That all changed with a congressional mandate following the marine electric tragedy in which 31 crew members died because they were too hypothermic to climb into the basket themselves. Go ahead, deploy swimmer. Roger, deploying swimmer. Swimmer's away. Vice Admiral Cray is one of the few Coast Guard pilots to fly both fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters. Uh, I just feel extremely fortunate to have had that opportunity again to see this full spectrum of, uh, of Coast Guard aviation and the difference that they make in terms of the end game and the conditions that they fly in. Coast Guard pilots have left their historical mark on military aviation, from piloting the first transatlantic flight to pioneering the use of helicopters. As today's Coast Guard aviators grow in prominence with every hurricane, rescue case, and drug interdiction, we can't forget that chilly December day back in 1903. Coast Guard Petty Officer Adam Eggers, Pentagon Channel News. Well, as you can see by Petty Officer Adam Eggers' story, the history of aviation dates back more than 100 years. In 1908, Orville Wright stunned and captivated the world by test flying a new revolutionary aircraft. The event at the time made headlines when the aircraft was destroyed. Now more than 100 years later, a replication of that original is on display at Fort Myer. Dave Anarino has the story.